Welcome to the Purpose Driven Mom Show, episode 388. It's the new year. I hope you are excited and energized, but I also know what's about to come, and that's that crash and burn after our New Year's planning. This is where we make these beautiful goals. We know all the things that we want to do, and then life hits us right about now or maybe next week where the the energy is gone, and we're not sure where to go from here. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. How do you actually stay focused on the goals that you made for yourself for 2024? Because I know that energy, right? We just had a planning um, vision setting workshop. I'm recording this in December, but we just finished it up with a bunch of, we had 200 people come to plan their year and they were excited, but I know what's going to happen for them. And probably for you is now reality's hit, right? The post holiday hangover is done. We are back to schedules. We're back to reality. And there's probably some mistakes you made in goal planning. And I'm going to talk to you today about how do you combat those mistakes. All right. So you can check out show notes today at a purpose driven mom.com slash podcast 388 to learn more. But let's dive into the three things I think are going to become a key lever for you when it comes to actually achieving your goals this year. And the first one might sound counterintuitive, but it is do less. One of the biggest mistakes that I notice with the moms I work with in the Purpose Driven Mom Club, in the Routine Expansion Roadmap, in all of my programs over the past almost, gosh, is a little over six years now, right? Is they put too much on their plate. And I know what you're saying, Kara, I've got too much to do. I've got all these things I've got to get done. Of course, I'm doing more. If I want to achieve my goals, I have to keep going. But here's the thing I want to tell you. Just because you put more on your planner and inside your to-do list does not mean you're going to actually get done more done. And it, by planning yourself at this extreme place, right? Where it's like, go, 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 do, do, do. All you're actually doing is setting yourself up for failure for the day you don't achieve the goal. Because in reality, right? I'm not being a Debbie Downer here, but in reality, you're gonna have a day where you don't hit your goal. You're gonna have a day where you're not feeling motivated. Can I tell you something? Not all of us are naturally motivated. I am not a naturally motivated person. I am driven where there's a difference between those two words, driven versus motivated. But I struggle sometimes to get my get up and go, to get my motivation, to get all those things going. So this is really what we talk about and what we call the Monday mentality. What is the Monday mentality, you may ask? Well, it's the thing we always do. We put so much on our plates. We get super excited about doing things. We're like gung-ho. It's Monday. And I mean, this year, January 1st on a month. I mean, come on. It was set us up for this, this type of failure. We're excited and we're ready to go. We put so much on our plates. We do it Monday. But then by Tuesday, we're tired. We do a little less. By Wednesday, we're, you know, crawling out of bed to get things done. So we tell ourselves, eh, I failed. I said I was going to show up perfectly. I said I was going to do it seven days. I already failed one day. I'll just try again on Monday. Instead, what I want you to do in 2024 is put less on your plate. Don't say to yourself, I'm going to do something seven days in a row. That sets you up for failure. Give yourself some buffer. Give yourself some space. Even if it's six days, you have that one day to make a mistake because you were human and you're going to make a mistake. And so by giving yourself less on your plate, you're actually going to do more because instead of quote, failing on Tuesday because you miss a task, you have the momentum to keep going. When you also put smaller tasks on your plate, this allows you to get things done. 15 minute formula. It's my book. It is my framework. It is what I live by. Why? Because I can convince myself to do anything for 15 minutes. 15 minutes will also go by really fast. I'm going to give you a great real example. I'm recording this. It is December 20th, right before the holidays. My kids will be off for break soon. I don't want to do anything. I don't feel like working. I just want to read my books and I need to finish running my errands and go wrap my gifts. Like I don't feel like doing any work. So what did I say to myself today? I have a list of what I needed to get done today. All right. And it was like a bare minimum, not a lot. I use my micro three philosophy. I have my list. It's like right here. If you're watching on YouTube, it's over in my planner. I've got it here for myself, right? Instead of I must do 3000 things, I've got three small tasks per time block and they're small. Literally, it was record this episode, which will take me about 20, 25 minutes to record. Get this episode done. And what I'm going to do in between, this isn't a tip on there, but I'm then going to give myself a reward. So as soon as I'm done with this episode, I'm going to go read like two chapters of my book. And then I'm going to come back and do something else. I have less on my plate today and I have small chunks on my plate. Why? Because I'm more likely to do that. Record the episode is one small task. I didn't say complete the podcast episode. No, I I have someone, uh, hey, Sharon, she does all my podcast editing and things like that. 
But when I was a solopreneur and I was doing all of it myself, I made the mistake of saying, I'm going to complete episode 388, which means I need to outline and create my images and record and edit and do my show notes and get the promotion. That's really six things in one. But on my planner, I used to write complete episode 388. Today, what I'm writing is record. Other things on my plate, choose the title. Record the mid-rolls, right? Very small, concrete chunks. When I look at this in my personal life, I think about, I talk a lot about being a Girl Scout leader, right? Because I use this concept for Girl Scouts. I need to plan out the new year. We're about to go into cookie season, things like that. So what I did was I made my list, all the Girl Scout things I had to get done, but I made them small. Write this one email, order these patches. Literally, I haven't unpacked. We had our holiday party Monday. I need to unpack my bag. Unpack your bag, right? Um, brainstorm ideas for quarter one meetings, right? Make a plan for the first meeting in January. Create the materials for the first meeting in January. You see how small it is? It's not do everything. It's not get everything done. It's small. And what small tasks allow you to do and why they'll help you actually stick with your goals in 2023 is they let you stay focused because you're not, your brain isn't doing that thing where it's so overwhelmed. It doesn't know what to do. You've got all these things running through your head. What your brain is doing instead is saying, I can handle this 15 minute task. Okay. So 2024, I want you to look at your goals, make sure that they are in small chunks and you're putting less on your plate. Now, the other thing that I'm going to say, and I will preach it till I blow in the face is accountability. If you want your goals to be achieved this year, you need a cheerleading squad. You need accountability. And I'd invite you to the Purpose Driven Mom Club. You can go to a purposedrivenmom.com slash club right now. Get on the wait list. We don't open again until um, the end of March, but come to our free Facebook group, right? Come hang out on Instagram or find whatever it looks like for you. It may not be your partner, may not be your best friend in real life. I will tell you, Um, I don't think a lot of my in real life friends even listen to my podcast, right? And it's funny. I think about that sometimes and I'm like, wow, you like, I don't even think you know anything about what I do, but that's okay. As much as I want them to be my number one for certain things, they're not going to be it for every goal. Now I have one friend, we're doing a couch to five to get a couch to 5k together. So we're texting. Did you get this done? I have another friend. We're doing water goals together, et cetera. So I have certain people that I lean into for accountability on certain things, but don't think that there's one person that's going to be your accountability. And a lot of us want it to be like our partner for marriage, right? But here's the thing. My husband is a great guy. He is very supportive, but he doesn't always understand all of my goals. So when I start talking business jargon to him, he's not the best one to be my business accountability buddy, right? And I used to get mad about that. Like, why don't you care about my goals? Like I care about my goals. And it's because they're not his goals. It's because they're mine. And so one of the things that's gonna help push you from I'm struggling to accomplish my goals in 2024 is accountability. So if you have goals, no matter how big or small they are, I want you to find a support system. You can go on Facebook, search for groups of people that are like interested in the same things. Um, You can you know, text a friend, do you want to do this goal with me? You can find communities like our Facebook group, whatever it is. And I want you to find that accountability that's going to allow you to feel supported in the way that you need to be supported. Um, our, we had a couple, was a couple weeks ago, maybe about a month ago on the on the podcast, uh, we had an episode with a Purpose Driven Club mom uh, coaches and our team. And we talked about how we've been holding each other accountable for our productivity for the end of the year. And it's been phenomenal. We check in with each other. Um, and it isn't so much that one person is doing all the checking in. It's just that we've created a space for it. We've created a space to check in on your things. All right. And so if you want your goals to really be accomplished in 2024, what's your accountability look like? Now, the third and final little tip I'm going to give you today as you're going into the new year is doing weekly audits and check-ins on your goals. I teach a whole system in my program about auditing. And I think one of the things that will keep you on track with your goals is a weekly audit. Now we do um, weekly planning in the club. um, And one of the cool things about this is that every week you're forced to look at your goals from the last week. And one of the reasons I think people say the club really works for them because they're getting, you know, uh, getting on our coaching calls and stuff is that they're getting the accountability. So what I recommend you do is you pick one day a week to do an audit. Um, I like to do mine on Sundays for the week. And I do this for my personal goals. On Fridays is when I do my business ones, right? And I want you to ask yourself, how is my goal going? Am I still on track? And what needs to change? The reason this works is because if we wait until the goal is due to even look at the goal, then it's too late and it becomes overwhelming and insurmountable. I always share this story. A lot of you have reading goals, I'm sure, for the year. If you said to yourself, I'm going to read 52 books this year, 
you do great in January, but you don't, then you hit a lull and you don't check in until November and you still have 45 books to read. That's going to feel really overwhelming. And you're not going to, want to do it. But if you're checking in each week, really, you're just going to have to adjust your goal by micro measures, right? Oh, I got a little behind on my book. I just need to read a couple more pages here, a couple more pages. And that's so much more doable for our brains. Again, this is December, but it's silly. Um, I'm uh, making a latch hook pillow, right? I, I took up a hobby. It was one of my things this year is latch hooking. I want to start crafting more in my downtime. I enjoy it so much. If you don't have hobbies, I, I'm, I'm big on hobbies, get a hobby. Um, so I'm, I'm latch hugging. I wanted to complete this pillow by the end of, uh, by, by Christmas because it's a Christmas pillow and I wanted to enjoy it before I had to pack all my stuff up. Um, and I started it early November. And I remember sitting with my daughter and being like, this feels like a lot to do. Do you think I can get it done? Like before Christmas? And she's like, I think so. So we used the numerical goal process. I mapped it out. I, you know, I, how many rows there were divided by how many days a week I would do it. Something I teach in the program. And it was like two rows a day, five days a week. So I was like, all right, I can do this. Well, I was doing really good. And then I got off track. And one of the reasons I got off track. So again, auditing why, not just saying I'm a failure, but why is because when I was latch hooking was at night, my husband and I were like watching TV together. And um, we, I can't stay up honestly more, more than like an hour for TV. I just, I get itchy, like sitting around for that long. Um, and I just, I'm tired. So we, and it's so annoying to my husband. I'm just going to tell you, like, we'll watch a movie and we were watching hunger games and we got like halfway through and they're about to go into the arena. And I was like, I'm going to go to bed. He's like, what, <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm like, I just, I hit my hour. Like, I'm good. We can watch the second half tomorrow. It's annoying to him, I'm sure, but it's how I operate. Anywho, we've been watching TV together and hanging out at night, but we had a week in December where our router broke. We had no Wi-Fi, and it was really frustrating. We had no TV. Because we had no TV, we weren't watching TV together at night. Because we weren't watching TV together at night, I wasn't getting into my habit trigger of when I watch TV, I latch up. So I got behind and off track on my goal. Just uh, yesterday, I looked at my latch hook and I was like, I really want to finish this. Um, to, so what did I say today is the 20th Wednesday. So on Monday, I was like, all right, I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I have five days to finish this because I'm going to be away Saturday. I don't want to work on it on Sunday for Christmas Eve. And I want it done by Monday, right? So I have five days and I counted. And I was like, all right, I have 15 rows left. 15 divided by the five days is three. So my original goal was do two rows a day. That felt okay. That didn't feel that overwhelming. Well, now it just changed a little bit. So because I've audited it, I know I just have to do three rows. If I had left it and left it and left it, and I didn't keep auditing every week, I would have had half the thing to do, been really frustrated and given up. So when you're going into your 2024 goals, I want you to right now put down something in your planner that has when you're going to be doing audits, when you're going to be doing planning, when you're going to be adjusting your goals. If you do it in small chunks, it will feel less overwhelming. There's a lot going on. It's a new year. I know you're excited, but what I want to tell you is that you are capable of achieving your goals, 100%. I want you to think about doing less so that you can achieve more. And I want this to be the year where you push past those roadblocks, push past the obstacles and get it done. It's possible. And listen, if the new year has not started out for you the way you wanted it to, tomorrow's a new day. You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till the next month. You could just keep going. Um, we're going to have a lot more videos going up on our YouTube um, and things like that. So please make sure that you check them out. Otherwise, have a great January. Have a great new year. And I will talk to you soon.